My mother moved in with me in her later ages, but then she starts to try to claim ownership of my house. Yeah, I can understand maybe her mind starting to slip, but when she starts to act a certain way towards my wife, that's where I draw the line. I might be a mama's boy, but I can only take so much. I'm 24 and male, and I recently purchased my first house. My wife and I have been saving up for two years to afford the deposit, and finally all hard work has paid off. It was always a dream of mine to own my own house, ever since I was young, because my mother was always just a renter, and we were always being evicted because she forgot to pay the rent. I don't know if she actually forgot, or if she just enjoyed the drama of the cops being called to evict us, but I do know that it was really damaging to my psyche as a child. Because of this, I've always felt insecure wherever I lived. Even though I made sure to pay my rent religiously, I was always paranoid that my landlord was going to come in and force me out. So, naturally, when my wife and I managed to buy our own home, it felt like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders as I could breathe for the first time in my life. I've had a strained relationship with my mom for most of my life, not just because of the whole eviction thing, no, she was also addicted to drugs when I was younger. And every time I came home from school, she would always just be on them on the couch or something. The amount of times I came home and thought she was, well, dead from those drugs because she was barely breathing is more than I can even count. Well, mom got clean when I was 15, thankfully, but the damage to our relationship had already been done. It wasn't even just the drugs that put a strain on it. It was the fact that she loves drama. I don't mean that she loves to gossip behind people's back and stuff like that, no. I know a lot of people whose mom are like that, and, well, I mean mom loves getting the cops called on her. She loves to tell stories about times she's evaded arrest. Just really crazy stuff that no sane person would ever think to tell a story about. Because of this, the day I turned 18, I moved away. I've been saving up money from my part-time job for over a year to pay the deposit on an apartment. I've been hiding the money in a coffee can. Growing up with an addict, it becomes second nature to hide your money. And just because mom wasn't well doing drugs anymore, that still did not mean she could be trusted. She'd take whatever money she could find in the house and spend it on clothes, makeup, hair treatments... By that time, it was largely down to me to pay the rent anyways, because I didn't want to keep moving. So, I turned 18 and I moved out. Mom either barely noticed that I was gone or was overjoyed to stop being responsible for me. It's hard to tell which one she was feeling, but we barely spoke for a few years after I left. That was until two years ago, when Mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's fine. It was only stage one, and after a lot of chemo, she's been cleared completely. But she was left pretty weak for a while. She wasn't able to stand on her own or feed herself, so it was pretty much down to me to do everything for her. My wife's really been my rock through all this. I couldn't have done any of it without her. She dropped everything and moved into my mom's apartment with me for six months, just to help me take care of her. And I really couldn't have been more grateful for her if I tried. The problem is, ever since I moved in to help mother, she starts play acting and being helpless. She was strong enough six months after I moved back in to take care of herself, so I moved out and tried to continue on about my life. But it started a dangerous new precedent. My mom calls me every day for help with small things, and it's gotten ridiculous recently. She'll pretend to need my help with showering, with feeding herself, and she'll act like she's too weak to drive. I know this is probably just sounding harsh, and I know that, but I really can't emphasize just how fine my mother is. She's in better health now than she was when she was an addict and she seemed to take care of herself just fine back then. I think she's just enjoying having an adult son to take care of her. My issue is that I can't say no. My wife has told me time and time again that I need to stand up to my mom, but I just can't do it. 
She'll get these big old fake crocodile tears in her eyes any time I start to try to distance myself and start bemoaning her illness. She even told me that it would be my fault if her cancer came back. My wife was shocked at that one. Her parents are great people, so it blows her mind that any parent can treat their child the way my mom's been treating me for, uh, my entire life. I don't even know how I survived my childhood without being kidnapped or murdered or something, because mom sure as heck was not looking out for me. This was what led to mom moving in with us, which has caused a whole host of problems, the least of which being my suffering mental health. During those six months when mom was ill and really did need our help, I struggled to be around her so much, sure, but that was an end in sight. I knew that once she was strong enough to take care of herself, we would just be able to leave. That was the only thing keeping me sane. But now that she's living with us, I can see no end. I don't think she's ever intending to move out either. She's been planting her roots as firmly as she knows how to. The strain on my marriage is another thing. Mom is awful to my wife. I didn't mean that she's just the typical mother-in-law, passive-aggressive type that you always hear about. No, I mean mom is an absolute monster. She yells at my wife screams at her, accuses her of wanting her cancer to come back, every possible way there is to abuse a daughter-in-law, my mom's felt it. Well, I'm really at the end of my ropes here. My poor sweet wife is living in misery. She cries almost every day because of the horrible things my mom says to her. When mom's not berating her, She's pretending to be weak and ordering my wife around like she's just her personal servant. I can't keep doing this for much longer, and I know that my wife can't either. She's begged me time and time again to stand up to my mom. I've tried. I really have. But every time I try to talk to her, it feels like I'm that little boy again, begging her to wake up when she's strung out on the couch. It's paralyzing. Update number one. Hey guys, I initially wrote the first post to kind of get everything off my chest. I didn't actually expect anybody to read it, but y'all did. <laughs> and all of you sure seem to have some opinions on me. This was not posted on the Am I the A-Hole subject, but all of you seem to think it was because you've been calling me an A-Hole like crazy. Look, I get it. Reading through the post, it seems like I'm just sitting back and watching my mom abuse my wife without saying anything, but I've tried. I really have. I've told mom she needs to respect my wife. I've even threatened to kick her out, but she just laughs and then pretends to be really weak over the next couple of days. It's not like she can't afford her own place. She gets enough alimony from her four ex-husbands that she could live a life of luxury if she wanted. I think she just enjoys taking over my life. It makes her feel important. She's gotten so much worse in the weeks since the initial post that I read, and I think of it as, well, the good old days. She started calling the house hers and telling my wife that she's lucky to be allowed to live here. She's been inviting her friends over almost every day, and since all of her friends are ex or current junkies, they aren't exactly the kind of people I want in my home. At least, one expensive vase has gone missing, and when I tried to bring it up to my mother, she just laughed. She claims that she's too weak to take care of herself, but she somehow is not too sick to get drunk with her friends in my living room twice a week. Though, the morning after, she's always far too sick to clean up the beer cans and cigarette stubs. So I have to do it. It feels like we're in a sick kind of role reversal where she's a rebellious teenager and I'm the stuffy parent who won't let them have fun. It's been like this since I was a child. I would be the one at 11 years old who would go to the grocery store when we have no food in the fridge. I'd be the one to make her first meal in a day while she lays on a couch smoking and complaining, telling me that I was doing everything wrong in life. On top of it, she's gotten so much worse to my wife. 
I didn't even know that it was possible for things to get much worse, but my wife's become a neurotic shell of a person. She's stressed to the max. Any loud noise makes her jump, and she's been crying nonstop. This is not sustainable. I can't allow this to continue. It's my job as the man of the house to take care of my wife and defend her from harm. It hurts that she's, well, her harm is facing in the form of my own mother. But it doesn't matter. I want to do something about it. I really do. I want to stand up and yell at my mom as loud as I can. I want to tell her that she's a nasty, worthless drunk who failed me as a child and is still failing me as an adult. But I just don't know how. It's like I recede into myself every time I'm near her, like I'm just a little boy again. I need to do or say something soon. Because at this rate, I'm going to lose my wife. And then it'll just be me and my mom again. I think that's what she secretly wants. She hated raising me, but I think she enjoys the idea of having someone at her beck and call. Someone who has to thank her for their life. She wants it to just be me and her so that she can bully me into being her live-in maid and manipulate me to give her whatever the heck she wants. Update number two. I think I've made a critical mistake and I know for a fact that it's going to come back around to bite me in the butt. No mistake. It was my mom's birthday yesterday and she invited all her friends over to party. I don't know why she needed her birthday as an excuse since she's been doing that almost every day ever since she moved in anyways, but there you go. I've taken my wife out to dinner in hopes of having some couples time. It did seem to be working and she seemed more relaxed than I've seen her in weeks and it felt exciting, like when we were first dating. We had a great night, but when we got back home, the house was a wreck. There were people everywhere, sleeping on the floor, sleeping in piles of their own vomit. When my wife saw it, she just about started to have a panic attack. So, I had her go straight to our bedroom and told her that I'd take care of this. It was the least I could do. When I went into the living room, there was mom, passed out on the couch mumbling to herself, and she gets crappy if she doesn't wake up in her bed. And I don't think any of us can handle mom much more crabbier right now. So... I pick her up, carry her to her room. She was talking in her sleep, talking about how the house was hers, how she was so generous for letting us live there, and that I should sign the house over to her as a birthday present. I didn't think anything of what I was saying, I just said, sure mom, it's definitely your place. Well, this was the mistake I made because it seems like mom wasn't quite as drunk as she was pretending to be, and now she genuinely believes our home is hers. She'd always made little comments, but she actually thinks she owns it now. It's been three days since her big birthday party, and she seems stronger than she has ever been. She isn't even using her walker anymore. She's marching around the place, and she's even called a contractor in. She's making plans to renovate the house that my wife and I bought with our own money. I'm talking about knocking down the walls, painting the ceilings, replacing the windows... Don't ask me how she thinks she's going to afford all this. Because alimony only stretches so far. She's even told us that she's going to knock down the wall between our bedroom and her own so that she can have an extra large room. My wife was just about chewing her fingers off at the breakfast table, so I felt like I had to say something. I asked my mother where she was supposed to sleep, and she just laughed and told us we could sleep in the living room until we found a new place. My wife just made a loud squeaking noise and left the room. I have no idea what I'm going to do here. If I call my mom out, she'll tell me that I gave her the house. If I tell her I was being sarcastic, she'll somehow suddenly get sick again and need us to care for her. My wife has nearly been reduced to a shell of herself, and I'm absolutely at a loss. It feels like I'm losing everything. My house, my wife, my future. I don't know what to do. And every time I think about it, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Update number three. My mom has officially lost it. If I thought that she's lost it before, well, boy, I was wrong. I had not seen losing it until now, 
I don't know if she's pretending or if she's like somehow fallen into some kind of narcissism driven psychosis, but she's been acting absolutely insane. As I said last time, she seems to think the house is hers now. Obviously, this is not the crazy part. Even though it may well have been with the way the belief took her over completely, it started a few weeks ago. I know I told you guys about her plans to renovate the place and all that. I think I was in semi-disbelief, to be honest. I thought maybe she was just placating or something, maybe going senile, but no. Imagine my surprise when one day I wake up and there's a building crew in my home about to start knocking down walls. My walls. The walls of my bedroom, which my wife and I are currently sleeping in. These knuckleheads haven't even bothered to do any kind of surveillance or walkthrough, any safety checks. They just took my mom's assurances that the house was empty and ran with it. What's worse is that she actually told them it was safe. She knew that we were in the room. It was 8 a.m. on a Thursday morning. She knows what time we wake up, what time I go to work. She knew that we'd sleep in that room right when the crazy guys with hammers started working. It's only luck that we've made it up to use the bathroom or my wife and I would have been crushed under a pile of rubble, killed in our own sleep. And the poor men who were only doing their job would have two deaths on their hands. I just don't know what my mom was thinking. I don't think she wants me dead, though I can't say the same for my wife. I just never thought that she would go this far. Afterwards, she put on the weak old lady act and pretended she'd just been confused and forgotten that we were there. The building crew absolutely ate it up, but I know that she's sharper than she pretends to be. When I was a kid, she used to run in front of cars that were stopped at traffic lights just as the light turned green. I think she was trying to collect an insurance payout or something to fund her drug style. And I can't shake the feeling that she was trying to do the same thing here. If my wife and I were injured or killed in an accident caused by a building crew's lack of safety precautions, she could sue them for everything and probably win. That wasn't even the worst thing she did, though it's arguably the most dangerous. Once I explained to the crew that mom had dementia and did not actually own the house, they were really understanding and left. As you know, my mom does not have dementia, but I couldn't very well tell them she's a psychotic narcissist who was probably hoping for a big payout, could I? Everything calmed down for a few weeks after that, and I honestly thought that everything was starting to get better. Mom had been far less than a bully towards my wife. She'd been spending a lot of time in her room, and the atmosphere in the house, though still frosty, was nowhere near the below freezing levels that it had been. I'd even almost worked up the courage to talk to her, tell her that she needs to move out, finally stand up for myself for once and for all and for my wife, when she suddenly came to us and said that we were behind on rent. I had no idea what she was talking about at first, and I actually started to feel guilty. For a second, for doubting her, because I thought that she was genuinely confused and showing signs of dementia now. But, again, I was trying to think the best of her, because Mom was nowhere near confused, she had concocted in her little brain the idea that since I've told her the house was now hers ever since, then we owed her rent for staying there. Now she mentioned this once or twice in passing, and I thought that she was joking, obviously, or just taking a chance that we might say yes. But no. She'd been sitting in her bedroom, calculating rent prices to charge us without bothering to tell us and was now attempting to charge us a backlog of rent that we didn't even owe. We literally own the house. She's the one staying for free, but when you try to tell her stuff like that, does she care? No, she doesn't. She rolls her eyes and tells me that we have a verbal agreement that the house was hers now, that she would soon be arranging for the deed to be changed to her name. I was dealing with this all alone because my wife just left the room as soon as my mom came in with the holier-than-thou look on her face. Yeah, I don't blame her. And I wish that I could do the same, but alas, I'm not so lucky. Now, it's been two months since my mom's birthday, 
almost exactly. And according to her, we owe eight thousand dollars in rent. She's trying to charge us four thousand dollars a month in rent to live in a home that we bought and are currently making mortgage payments on. I just started laughing when she mentioned that number because I was so taken aback. I ask her, where'd you get that number from, mom? And she says that she's been looking around online and calculating the rate people were charging in the area, and this was it. Now, please note that we live in a suburb town an hour and a half outside of the major city, and I commute that every day to get to work, twice. My commute takes three hours daily, so there's absolutely no way anyone around here is charging that much for rent on a three-bedroom house. Not even a two-bedroom apartment in the city would be costing that much a month. I don't know how many times I can continue to use this as an excuse, but I really was lost for words here. You try telling someone who's so sure of themselves that they're comically wrong, especially someone with a known mean streak who likes to play the victim whenever they're called out for their shenanigans. I probably should have dealt with this more thoroughly, especially with the hindsight now, but I didn't bother. I told mom that she was being absolutely ridiculous and that she needed psychological help. Not my kindest hour, but at this point, I was just so completely burned out from constantly having to manage her to prevent tantrums. So I just called her crazy and left the room. I should have known that she was planning something stupid when she didn't bother arguing, but I was high on what I thought was a victory against her, so I did not pay much attention to her lack of anger. I can't describe how upset it makes me that I have to talk about my own mom with this kind of language. The fact that any conversation with her feels like emotional warfare, and I take any slight triumph as, well, a kind of victory. It's so telling of our relationship. I'm not going to pretend that I'm the perfect son. No, I know that I'm far from it. But I hate that she's turned me into this. Just this angry thing constantly on the defense. I've snapped at my wife so many times and she almost flinches any time I address her. I don't know if she can handle much more of the atmosphere she's in. She has a good, kind, wholesome family. She's not used to living in such a hostile environment, and it hurts my soul to know that my mom moving in has regressed me to angry teenager that I was before, lashing out at people because I could not very well lash out at my own mother. The worst thing happened when I woke up on a Saturday morning at 7 a.m. to banging on the door like someone was trying to bust the thing down. I jump out of bed, thinking my mom had hired some kind of builder crew. Again. She was waiting in the foyer, a smirk on her face. And when I opened the door, imagine my surprise when there was three police officers in tactical gear waiting on my front porch. I was even more surprised when they started yelling in my face, telling me to put my hands up, rushing into the house and shoving me down onto the floor ever before I could even think. Behind me, I could hear mom crying, though I recognized it obviously as her fake cry. My wife was in the background screaming upstairs, having followed me to the landing, and I could just about see her with her hands up, standing shaking in her nightgown from where a cop was holding her down on the ground with his knee. Everything that came after that was pretty much a blur, but I do remember some parts. I was escorted to the police station in handcuffs, barely dressed in a t-shirt with my boxer shorts. My wife only had time to get dressed herself and follow the car to the station. My mom had called the cops on us. Well, that much is obvious to you all now, I hope, but you're probably wondering why the cops showed up in full riot gear, holding their weapons and treating me like an actual serial killer or something. Well, I'll tell you why. My mother, the woman who raised me, called the cops and told them that the people she had rented her house to were suspected drug dealers who were heavily armed. The cops, taking this report very seriously as they do, showed up at my doorstep and arrested me on the spot. It took hours down at the station to clear things up. I had to call a lawyer 
My wife had to run to the house to find some paperwork that named us the owners of the home. I found out later that she found my mom in our bedroom, ransacking the place looking for the documents, but thankfully we kept them in the dining room and a filing cabinet behind a screen. Even after all that, the cops end up searching the house for anything that might be proof of illegal activity. I will say that they were very apologetic when they realized that they have been tricked, but not apologetic enough to forgive them. When we got home, the house was trashed. I don't know how much of that were the cops looking for a drug stash or mother looking for the paperwork, but it was an absolute disaster. Worst of all was the fact that mom was still there. She didn't even apologize or pretend she hadn't done anything when we got home. She just said that the place was a mess and we better get to cleaning it up quickly and went back to her room. My wife wondered why she had not been arrested for calling in a false tip, but I wasn't confused. Oh no, she probably used the confused lady act yet again and made the cops think that she just made a mistake with her dementia. No one wants to arrest an old lady and she knows that. It is time for some drastic action. I can't live like this anymore. And my wife's half mad at this point, looking like a scared ghost half of the time. I'm done bending over backwards for mother. Done making allowances for her. I'm just done. Update number four. Final update of the insane mother saga. She's gone. Mom actually left the house. My wife isn't here after the cops ransacked the place. She went to stay with her mother a few states away. I don't think her nerves were up too much of mom's antics, and I doubt our marriage would have lasted if she'd stayed. I talked about drastic action in the last update that I posted a few weeks ago, and a lot of people seem to think that I was going to go out and buy a gun or something, but that is not the case. I'm not that crazy. No, not yet. I called my grandma, and I know some people will laugh at that idea. Because that can, well, what can a grandma do against a psychotic woman like my mother? But you don't know my grandma. <laughs> For some background, my dad's mom is a scary lady. I rarely saw my father during my childhood. And after I later found out that he had not even bothered to tell his mom that he had another kid outside of his marriage, with, well, a junkie at that. But when dad died a few years ago, grandma found out about me. I don't know how... I think she found some pictures or something, but she did reach out to me after that. We aren't close. She's kind of stern and disapproves of the way I was raised. But one thing that we share is that we absolutely hate my mother. When I first met Grandma, she asked a lot of questions about the day I grew up and how it happened and why did I grow up certain ways. But she had a lot of questions about our financial situation. It took me a while to realize it, but she'd found evidence that mom had been blackmailing my father for years, threatening to tell his wife about me if he did not help her financially. Dad worked in the stock markets and, well, he would be a no paper trail left and mom was blackmailing him into helping her do insider trading. As you may know, huh, that's illegal. At the time, grandma was determined to get mom arrested, but I asked her not to. At that point, I still had some hope for mom. You'll probably wonder why I didn't use this information back when mom almost killed us with the well-building crew. But you need to look at this from my perspective. No one wants to see their own mother go to prison, no matter what she's done. My wife did not know about this. I've kept it my deep, dark secret. I wanted to tell mom that I knew about it so many times, but I always felt guilty. Well... Not anymore. After I almost got shot in my own house because of a tip she called in, I was done. As soon as I got my wife packed up off to her parents, I called Grandma. She was here within a few days, and I don't think my mom recognized her. But when I introduced them, you should have seen the color drained from my mother's face. I need you all to know that my mom is not in jail. Not right now. And I never intend her to be... I just asked Grandma to scare her a little, and oh boy, she did. I don't know what they talked about. They went up to my mom's bedroom to have a private conversation. All I know is that an hour later, 
Grandma was walking out of there with a smile on her face, and Mom was packing her things frantically. She was apologizing profusely, running around grabbing things, all while telling me I'd never see her again, apologizing once more, and after another hour, she was on the street. I even called a taxi for her. Well, guys, I'm posting this from a spare account because my account is anonymous enough that I don't foresee any trouble with anyone finding out my name or where I live through it. I never wanted mom to go to jail, but I knew that calling grandma could open the possibility, and that's why I hesitated. I haven't heard from mother in a week now. Grandma stayed in town long enough to meet my wife when she came home, and then she left. My wife still hasn't forgiven me for taking so long to finally stand up to my mom. But hey, I'm working on it. Thanks to everyone who gave me advice through all this. It's been really appreciated. So guys, to me, this story was a really sad one. Yeah, this lady was super evil, but also mental disease is just a horrible thing. I want to hear your opinion on this one, guys. The part that just completely lost me and made me say, you know what, maybe this lady is crazy, is when she decides to call the cops and basically frame her kid as a burglar or a drug dealer or whatever she said. Anyways, let me know how you would handle it. Drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Here on Mr. Reddito, I post every single day. And if you've watched all the videos, you can actually look in the description down below and go subscribe to my other channels, which also have daily videos. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow.